Here we have some input to a linear time invariant system with a given impulse response. And we need to find the output. So immediately we would think of carrying out a convolution between the two. So the output would be the input convolved with the impulse response. Now, the input is a unit step and the impulse response is a one-sided exponential function. So what we're trying to do is a convolution between the two. So we write out our convolution expression. We can say y of t equals the integral from minus infinity to infinity. Now it's probably easier if I start with this function. So I'll say e to the minus 3 alpha, u of alpha, and then I'll shift this function. So then I have u of t minus alpha minus 2 d alpha. Now, before we carry out the integration, it is useful just to remind ourselves what do these unit steps do to the limits of the integration? So one thing we could do is to actually just sketch the two. So u of alpha, if we have an axis of alpha, u of alpha just looks like that. It's only positive, or it's only non-zero for positive alpha. So for alpha greater than zero, it's non-zero. For alpha less than zero, it's zero. So it has the effect of changing this limit to zero. And then we can simply replace it with the value one, that one there. And we can do the same with the other unit step. So this unit step is reversed because we've got the minus alpha. And if you're uncertain how to sketch this, what you do is you take this argument, so t minus alpha minus 2, and set it to 0. That gives you alpha equals t minus 2. So at t minus 2, that's where your step function starts, or ends in this case, because it's a reflected or a reversed step. So we have a, a step function that does that. So it's only non-zero for time less than t minus 2, less than or equal t minus 2. So now if you multiply the two, the only overlap you get is in this period between 0 and t minus 2. So the effect of this second unit step has been to change this limit to t minus 2. And then we can simply replace the step function with the equivalent value 1. But this will only be valid if t minus 2 is greater than 0. So that's our condition. t minus 2 is greater than 0 or t greater than 2. And we keep that in mind because at the end we need to multiply by a unit step to enforce that condition. So now we can go back to our integration, but this time we will replace our limits with our new limits, 0 and t minus 2. And the unit step functions have both disappeared and we simply have e to the minus 3 alpha d alpha. And the integral is minus 1 over 3 e to the minus 3 alpha from 0 to t minus 2. And we can then say that's 1 over 3 times e to the 0 is 1 minus e 
to minus 3, t minus 2. And that's our final result. But we shouldn't forget the condition that we stated. We said t minus 2 has to be greater than 0. So that means t has to be greater than 2. So that, we represent that condition mathematically by saying that the product, the result is multiplied by u of t minus 2. So this now is my final result. This is the output of a system where the input was a unit step delayed by two seconds and the impulse response was a decaying exponential. We found this by carrying out a convolution integral. And if we want to look at what the output might look like, so this is my input, this is my impulse response, this is my output. So this is the expression we just found. And this is how it would look in the um, time domain. So that is our final answer.